Well, folks, I surprisingly have some good news today. Nina Turner has announced that she will be indeed running for Congress once again. Many of us had suspected that this is what she would be doing, but today she made it official. So we have a lot to talk about with respect to this race. But first, I want to show you her ad. America is at a crossroads, wrestling between two futures. Do we sacrifice the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class to protect the ultra-wealthy? Or do we treat our people as America's greatest asset and ensure everyone has a real chance to live a good life? Families are struggling with higher gas and food prices, stagnant wages and shrinking benefits, while corporations make record profits. These are unprecedented times. Our leaders can't settle for just enough. They must fight for what we deserve. I'm Nina Turner, and I'm running for Congress because we deserve a voice for change in Washington. A leader who is on the side of the people, not out for the powerful or out for themselves. A leader who understands that health care has been denied to millions of Americans for far too long and will fight for Medicare for all. A leader who knows poverty is a policy choice and the minimum wage must be raised to a living wage who won't take a dime from special interest packs or do their bidding. You deserve a leader who is from here, who knows what it's like to grow up and live their life in this community, who has stood up for reproductive justice and served on the front lines of the fight for criminal justice reform and voting rights, not for days, but for decades. A member of Congress that stands shoulder to shoulder with leaders like Bernie Sanders, unapologetically to fight for working people and speak truth to power. And here's the truth. Greater Cleveland needs a change maker, not someone who just go along to get along. We can put an agenda through Congress that puts working families first, and that's worth fighting for. Something you can feel. Good union jobs, expanded health care, child care, and climate justice. Winning the battle against Republicans and the holdouts in our party will only happen when we put it all on the line for everyday people. An America as good as this promise is worth fighting for. Our children are worth fighting for. Our future is worth fighting for. That was an amazing ad. And what I love is that she is still unapologetically aligning with Bernie Sanders and progressives in Congress. She's putting policies front and center. That's what you want to see. You want to see substance. You want to see someone who is eager to fight. That's specifically what's lacking in Congress currently. Uh, the one critique that I have about that ad is that I don't think that the music fits. I think that the music choice was bad, but putting that aside, the substance is what really matters. And that ad contained no shortage of substance. Now, there's two things that I want you to know about this particular race first and foremost is that it will be very very challenging that's not to say that it's unwinnable because nina turner only lost by about 4300 votes but things have changed a little bit now Chantel brown she has that incumbent advantage but there are different factors that lead me to believe that this is a very winnable race, if not one of the more winnable races for progressives, in spite of how challenging that will still be. So for more details, we go to Ursula Perino of The Daily Beast, who explains Ohio is currently undergoing redistricting, meaning the district lines have the potential to change. But Ohio's 11th district, which Brown currently represents and where Turner previously ran, is firmly blue, making a Republican victory highly unlikely. During Brown's first year in Congress, she joined the Congressional Progressive Caucus and voted in favor of the Build Back Better proposal and the bipartisan infrastructure framework, among other Democratic priorities. The Congressional Progressive Caucus's campaign arm doesn't endorse opponents of sitting incumbents, but it wouldn't be unusual for progressive members of Congress to issue individual endorsements of primary challengers. So there's quite a bit of details crammed within just those three paragraphs here. Uh, we don't know how redistricting will impact this particular race. Perhaps it gives Nina Turner an advantage. Perhaps it disadvantages her. We just don't know. Second of all, we shouldn't expect the Congressional Progressive caucus to make any official endorsements. But with that being said, I do anticipate endorsements from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, perhaps Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib. I don't think that they're going to make this endorsement right away. I think that they're going to wait for the most optimal time, which I think is strategically savvy. But I do expect them to make endorsements. But if you are counting on the CPC coming out and endorsing Nina Turner, not going to happen, especially with Chantel Brown being a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. I think that that's probably her strategy. 
strategy, knowing that there would be future primary challenges against her. She joined the Progressive Congressional Caucus, but she's no progressive by any stretch of the imagination. But she's not the worst Democrat, to be fair to her. Now, one thing that we know about this is she is weak. She caved as soon as she got to Congress. So she voted for Build Back Better. That's good. But she voted for the bipartisan infrastructure proposal before the Senate voted on Build Back Better. So she gets in and like most Democrats, what does she do? She caves. She didn't stand with members of the squad who voted against the bipartisan infrastructure proposal. So she's weak. And what is the point of being in Congress if you're just going to be another seat warmer, not doing anything to actually push forward your agenda? I, I just don't get it. Now, furthermore, another reason why this race is so incredibly interesting is because we don't know what's going to happen with respect to Chantel Brown's ethic probe that she was facing prior to her victory against Nina Turner the first time. Now, we haven't gotten an update in a while, so we have no idea. I mean, perhaps it, it amounts to nothing. Perhaps Brown is forced to resign. We have no idea. But if the seat is open again because of this, Nina Turner is once again the front runner. But still, in this hypothetical situation, if Brown is forced to resign because the ethics probe doesn't turn out great for her, the Democratic Party establishment will do what they did the first time in trying to defeat Nina Turner by trotting out Hillary Clinton and other establishment figures to endorse her primary opponent. So regardless, you know, this is going to be a really tough battle, but it's worth the fight. We are really, really, um, we're needing to get invested in this fight. Contribute monetarily if you can, if you live in her district, phone bank and canvas for her because Nina Turner Turner is perhaps the spark that we need to ignite progressives in Congress, ignite that will to fight in Congress. Currently, I don't see anyone in Congress, at least in the House of Representatives, who is the leader that we've been looking for. There are certainly individuals with leadership qualities. Ilhan Omar is one, Jamal Bowman is another, but we need someone to get in there and be vocal and actually fight, stand up to the, to the Democratic Party establishment, challenge Nancy Pelosi. And Nina Turner, out of all people, is the one that I am most hopeful that will fill that leadership void within the Congressional Progressive Caucus and within Congress more broadly speaking. And it's not just about Nina Turner getting things accomplished in Congress. We don't have a national leader for progressives. The left has Bernie Sanders, but he's not going to run for president again. So we need someone with a congressional background, a national you know, record of governing to be able to one day run for president. I I'm just going to put that front and center. We need Nina Turner to one day become the president if we want any chance of saving the country and the world if it's not too late. But Nina Turner is the person who we need to fight really hard for him. So I'm going to be watching this race closely. I will keep you updated on changes to this race. And I recommend that you also stay very uh, focused on this race because this is one of, if not the most important house race in 2022. I don't know what's going to happen. Perhaps if Nina Turner is elected, best case scenario, Democrats could still lose the House, but just having her there to fight, to be a voice of reason, to push the Democratic Party and the Congressional Pro Progressive Caucus forward, that is incredibly invaluable. And that's something that I think is worth fighting for.